Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 28 of Minecraft Stoneblock. I am Mark, and I am flying over our mining dimension sort of mini base that I set up over here. Uh, as before, we have a couple void ore miners, we have a couple solar panels, there's a tier 1 and there's a tier 3. We have the botanic miner, also from environmental tech. And we have a solar panel from Solar Flux Reborn sitting in the center. Uh, all of that stuff we've looked at before other than the upgraded uh, solar panel or solar array, which I did mention. Uh, but we also have a bunch of Batania over here. And I have done a few bits of Batania just to get the ball rolling more or less. And we'll start at the beginning here. We have the usual Petal Apothecary. I have a kitchen sink buried in the ground here as a water source. I threw a crafting bench down here because we need uh, crafting space and we're running low on wireless power to craft across dimensions right now. So that's something I want to fix today. Uh, I've made the wand of the forest and I have a Lexica Batania and I'm going to actually get those out of the way. And I did a couple other things. I went ahead and automated the creation of living wood and living rock. Uh, the way living wood and living rock are created is you put the pure daisy in the middle of a set of either stone or wood and it automatically converts it to living wood and living stone. And I don't, yeah, there we go. I can demonstrate it. I was worried I didn't have any stone or uh, wood over here. So the way this works briefly is we have an item collector from Cyclic, which is going to pick up any any living wood or living rock that drops in this 5x5 five five area. We have two miners, controlled miners, also from Cyclic, which are going to either mine living rock or living wood. And they're just going to mine in a 3x3 three three area that you can see there. Uh, the reason I set the item collector's area just a little bigger is because sometimes the mining process kicks stuff outside of that circle. And uh, it just makes it make sure that everything gets picked up. I have a chest here that I can dump my materials into, which I'll do in just a minute. And that is wired up to nine block placers, which all will place items above them. So ba the basic idea being you throw stuff in the chest, it gets fed down, and you can see there's an item conduit there. It gets fed down to the block placers. The block placers play place the items, and eventually it gets turned to the living version, which then gets uh, mined or harvested by the two controlled miners. So a couple little minor details here. Uh, this extract bus is set to extract in round robin and I put an extract downgrade on this so it only moves one uh, block at a time and that is primarily to, to uh, spread the materials I put in here evenly across all of the block placers because what was happening before was it was dumping uh, it was moving items four at a time I think so only two block placers were getting used if I threw uh, a limited amount of stuff in there. And I just wanted it to take full advantage of the entire area the living daisy or the pure daisy can cover. So if I throw those in there, you can see it spreads them around. They will get converted. And while those are converting, we'll take a quick look at these tools. I was initially using uh, an A all in one tool from actually additions I believe in one miner and that mines everything uh, it mines dirt it mines rock it mines wood um, but it was pretty slow so I went ahead and made some fairly fast uh, unbreakable tools using Tinker's Construct uh, these have haste, they have a uh, cobalt head, which has a fast base mining speed, and I've gone ahead and upgraded them with one haste so far. And I stuck these in our uh, mob grinder that gives us uh, tool XP uh, that you've seen before. 
and leveled them up a couple times just to get enough modifiers on them to go ahead and do the unbreakable by adding... Oh, there they go. So shortly, this will start, hopefully, breaking. Yeah, you can see that every time it breaks a block, it instantly gets replaced with the tree. Now, the miners are kind of slow scanning the area around them to find blocks to break. So it's not the super fastest pro uh, process in the world, but, you know, I can let it run in the background and it just does it. And I already have, you know, plenty of living wood and living rock for our uh, current needs. So that's the first bit of automation I did getting ready for Batania. The second thing I did is I made the sort of standard starting flower, the end of flame. I also made a uh, manatee or monocle so I can figure out how the range on all these flowers. And, you know, end of flames are pretty well known. They pick up items from the surrounding area and burn them and turn them into mana. And I've got these set up, hooked up to three mana spreaders. Uh, this mana spreader back, or this mana pool back here is going to be sort of my uh, working mana pool. And then these two up here, I'm going to start just accumulate mana so I can eventually get uh, the portal to Alfheim going. Because eventually, that's our goal because we need pixie dust. And pixie dust, oops. Pixie dust. I don't know if I can look at this in JAI. I can. Uh, it's an elven trade of a mana pearl. You get a pixie dust back. So we need the portal to Alfheim to take care of that. And we need that to make the, I believe it's the alchemical alchemy chest. It's not the alchemy chest. It's the, uh, oh, it's the transmutation tablet, right? Yeah, we need four pixie dust to make the transmutation tablet, uh, along with a bunch of other stuff, obviously. So um, I am starting on the path to the Alfheim portal. We're not there yet. We still have a ways to go. But uh, the other thing I did was automate this dropper process, and it's a pretty standard setup. We have the uh, pressure plate, which if there's an item sitting there, I always forget, I think it emits, yeah, it emits a redstone signal. I put the switch here just to uh, give us a way to turn this mechanism off. Each of these plates is inputting a red signal. So if either of these items is generating a signal, it, it sends a red a signal up here to this device, which is the precise dropper that lets you set a delay, uh, an offset for where you want to drop it, and a count of items. And it's working, it's requiring a redstone signal. And in here, since we don't want to drop items when the plate is down, when it's emitting a redstone signal, I went ahead and, and in the Ender IO conduit and put a not filter in here, which means that when we're not receiving a redstone signal, we output a redstone signal. So it's basically inverting the signal, which means this is running when the plate is empty or that switch is off. Now, when the switch is on. Correction. It's running when the switch is off. So if I flip this switch, it just will stop running. And that was primarily so I could work on it without having to worry about picking up the random blocks there. So that is the basics of Batania. But the, the bigger problem that I have right now is I can't really use my wireless crafting terminal over here because to use this, it consumes booster energy. And you can see it's just draining that incredibly quickly as soon as it opens. So that's because we're going cross dimension here. Um, what I want to do today, and I th think I want to do it right here. So I'm going to attempt something I've never done before. I'm going to attempt to set up a quantum bridge. And a quantum bridge is a applied energistics mechanism for transmitting, uh, connecting an AE2 system to another dimension. 
And I think I didn't make enough quantum rings. Or, yeah, I thought I made more than that. Oh, well, I can make more. I have no idea what this looks like other than we put eight in a ring like that and we put the quantum chamber in the middle and it forms that cool uh, setup. And I believe we have to actually give this some power. So what I'm going to do is I have an energy acceptor, I have a dense energy cube, and I have a flux point. And I'm going to put the dense energy, ex energy, dense energy cell there. I think I'm going to put the energy acceptor here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the flux point here, and I'm going to go ahead and add this to our network. And I'm going to call it quantum gate. And it is outputting 396 RF per tick, so this quantum gate is up and running. So what I need to do is go back over to the overworld and actually finish making another quantum gate. And then I can put that quantum gate on the other side and then we'll make some singularities that will connect the two gates. So uh, give me a minute to go make that other gate. I guess I just miscounted when I was making stuff and I will be right back. Okay, I am down in our sub basement and I have the other quantum ring ready to go. And I th think I'm going to put this sort of right here. And I think I want to run dense cable. What is this? Green? I will just use smart cable. Ooh, that's not going to connect. Okay. I guess I won't use smart cable. I will do this. Oh, this isn't dense cable. Sorry. And I'm going to break the base. So let me uh, get the dense cable I need here. Well, there's dense cable right there. Uh, maybe it won't. This should just connect to this network. If I'm understanding everything correctly. Do I not have any dense green cable? All right. Let me just make that. Because I do want this to be smart cable, just so I can track how many channels are going in here. Um, wow. Fail, fail, fail. All right, let's do that, and let's do this. Hmm. Ah, there we go. It can only connect to the middles, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to have to move this then, because I'm going to want to be able to get more channels into it. Uh, so that's not using any channels at the moment. And now if we go back up. Ah. <laughs> This is the other project I have, which I forgot I was going to have to look at. Um, that's the other project I have, hopefully for today. I want to get this tunnel set up just so I can have access over here. So let's head back to the mining dimension. Yeah, you're, this is alive. Okay, I see. Yeah, you can see that that is not connected down there, but this is connected. So that's fine. Uh, so theoretically, the next step here is blowing stuff up. We have a singularity, and we have some ender dust, and we have some TNT. And if my research is correct, and there's no guarantee that it is, we're going to take this, and I'm just going to go out here so I don't make a mess of things. 
And I'll show you how I made the singularity in a minute. Uh, Ender Dust is just a ground up Ender Pearl. So I'm going to toss that down. I'm going to toss the singularity down. And if I like the dynamite, I don't know why I'm running away. That should have given us two entangled singularities. And it did. So this is a pair of singularities. So if we go over here, and before I actually set this up, I want to check one thing. I want to do that, and I want to look at our network stats. Okay, we're using about 4.1k RF. That's what I wanted to check. So we put one singularity in here, we go back to the base, and now that we're over here, we put the other singularity in here, and that connects the two uh, tunnels. So essentially that means that our uh, AE2 network now extends across to the other dimension, to the mining dimension. And the quickest way to test that is going to be Going over here, and, oops, not quite done, <laughs> not quite done. There is a little more work to do. First, I want to look at our power usage, and we're up to 4.4 KRF, which I think probably means that this connection is active. What I want to do is go up here, I'm going to stick that there, I'm going to take out this wireless access point and stick that here, and hopefully this is going to get a channel and it's alive, and knock wood, we're in range, and we are, because you can see we're no longer using infinite energy to access our AE2 system. So we have accomplished what I wanted to do. And I also brought along some upgrades for this. And I don't remember how many I used on the other side. I'm going to put in like, I'll put in 14. That's 60 meters. So I think I can probably go all the way to the back of our, yep, we're still in range because we're still not using energy. So we can now use our wireless access, our wireless uh, crafting terminal over here without paying the price of those boosters that we get as mob drops or making them. So that takes care of two of the things I wanted to get done today. I wanted to show you the Batania setup. I wanted to get this bridge working. So we have our A2 system connected up over here. And now I want to do the last thing for today, which is setting up an empower. Uh, looking at the recipe for the alchemical or the alchemy chest, alchemical chest, uh, we need a few things. We have a, need a diamond chest, which is easy. We need diamond lattice, which is, you know, easy. We've done it. We need chiseled stone, which is no big deal. We need evil infused iron ingots, which I went ahead and made because those are iron and I don't remember what the other item is. Iron and a nether star, eight iron plus one nether star gives us eight evil infused ingots, which I went ahead and did. Um, the other thing we need is this covalence dust and to make covalence dust we need to use the empower and it's relatively easy but i did the i wanted to get the basic legwork out of the way and this is the lovely room that we're going to do this in i decided that the empower needed to be in a lovely bright room with oh just the best colors so um, the way this works is you have four display stands that go around the outside of the empower and each of those gets power and I've gone ahead and set up the usual power network here. 
So I can just put these, oops, I can just put these down and they should instantly fill with power. And then in the middle we put our actual in power. And then to make the dust we have assorted recipes. And I have prepared what we need for these. So let's do the first one, which will be also the cheesy, uh, cheapest one, which should give us a whole bunch of, and I don't remember if there's anything we have to do to this. Nope, we're done. <laughs> that was fast. There are our, there's our low covalence dust. And we got 40 out of that. So we, we really don't have to do this very much, at least not for this. So that's why I didn't, uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time doing automation or anything like that with this. So again, same idea. I think there's probably an animation going on there. I have animations off just to reduce lag. This will take a slight bit longer because it's using more power, I'm sure. And one of the problems with the empower is it doesn't give you any sort of uh, progress. Uh, this is the high, this is the high covalence dust, um, which I have the wrong items in there. That's why it's not working. Do the right items, Mark, and don't put redstone on the floor. Let me get the coal I need. I guess I can't read. I didn't think any of these took that much power. Yeah, you can see there is an animation there. I just have it, I, I have it turned off. Let me turn those on back, back on just for a minute. I'll turn them all on for a second. Let's take a look at the alchemy chest. The medium covalent dust is a base essence ingot and redstone. So I did get the right ingredients for this one. So there's our base ingot. So we stick you in there. There we go. There's the animations. And there's our dust. So now I think we have almost everything we need to make our first alchemy chest. We might need to make a diamond lattice. We need to make a diamond lattice and a block of diamond, I think. Isn't that what it was? Oh, it's a diamond chest. I'm dumb. And we can make a diamond chest. So there's our diamond chest and the other thing we needed was the lattice which we can just craft. I'm going to go ahead and make 10 of these because we're, we're going to need a bunch. And now we can make our alchemic chest. There we go. So that was one of the quests in the Project E series which we just completed. So I'm going to grab that reward. Let's see what we get. We get some chance cubes. Yay. Um, and we have plenty of materials to make more alchemic chests. And I think we need a bunch of these because we need at least four for the transmutation table. I'm pretty sure that is correct. Transmutation table. Yeah, we need four. I have made some of the stuff for this, but I haven't gone nuts with it yet because we're, we need to work on the pixie dust. Uh, oh, we need night slime too. That's going to be a little work. Uh, I have to look at how to make that actually. I think we can probably do it with smelting, iron, liquid purple slime, and seared stone. Okay, we can make that. So, um, I th think that's a good place to wrap this up. I don't know how we're doing with Neutronium. Uh, we've got a bunch of nuggets, so we, we probably have enough nuggets to make our uh, alchemical tablet. So it's the other stuff we need to worry about. Okay, so next time I'll have more Batania done, I'm sure, 
and we will be a step closer. I think my next goal is to go ahead and get, well, we could do the energy condenser. What does this take? How bad is the energy condenser? Uh, that's just a bunch of, uh, that's just a bunch of red matter, a dirt chest, dark matter, and a crystal chest. So this won't be too bad. I will uh, go ahead and get ready to do this for next time as well. I did upgrade, I think I said this already, but I did upgrade all our uh, fusion injectors to Draconic so we can do this now. So I think that's our project for next time. Thanks for watching the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, consider leaving a like, uh, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to keep up with the uh, new releases as they go out. And leave me a comment if you have any thoughts or suggestions on where we should go next. If you have thoughts other than getting uh, further along in our quest book. Talk to you later. Have a great day.